All right, I think this is episode 220 somehow. Wow. I know, man, this is a long time. Uh, yeah. I do not adjust your microphone. We control the vertical and the horizontal. And by we, I mean Michael and I. Hello, Michael. Hey, we are taking over your airwaves. Yes. Uh, Andy is uh, is out on assignment this week. And by assignment, I mean uh, he's not here. So <laughs> feel free to uh, send us an email with where you think he is. Um, and don't look at his social feed. That's cheating. I actually don't know if he posted about it on his social feed, so I don't know <laughs> if that would even help you. <laughs> um, but Michael and I are here, and we're gonna. There's a there's a good amount of stuff going on this week. We played some video games, which is shocking for this podcast. I know. Yeah, we actually played games. When I know, right? Uh, but I want to talk about the most important thing: food. Okay, Michael. My wife and I made the Brunswick stew. I saw the picture. How did it? I want to know how it turned out. You guys and Michael, thank you so much. <laughs> that stew is amazing. <laughs> it is the most bizarre. I mean, it's not bizarre, but it is the like strangest combination of stuff when you're putting it together. You're just like, I feel like someone just took random things and threw them in a pot. It feel it definitely feels like the kind of recipe that was just like a fridge cleaning, right? Dude, like what exactly. do we have left over? Oh, we've got some lima beans, we got some corn, we got a little barbecue, a little chicken. Yeah, yeah, we got some like leftover pork. Yeah, throw that in there. Whatever. I don't know tomatoes. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Put put a can of tomatoes in there. Whatever. And yeah, it turned out great, man. It is, it is definitely that kind of thing where you know we we made it. I think. We started in the afternoon and then we didn't eat it until like supper time, you know? Mm-hmm. So we definitely let it cook for a while. But I feel like we could have started it at like 9 a.m. and left it go all day and it also would have been just as good. Like, I don't think the like cooking it longer, I don't know what, because the pork and the chicken that we put in there were already cooked once all day right. anyway. You know, so yeah, like, so it's it's just kind of a slow stew to let the flavors all come together. Yeah, if nothing else, we let it cook longer. Um, we kind of boiled off some of the water from like a lot of the tomatoes and stuff, but mm-hmm. which like fine. I think we also put in more cayenne pepper than your recipe recommended, and that was kind of nice. It was a bit spicy, which was kind of nice. Okay, yeah, that's that's just preference. Yeah, I it's people out there, you should try this recipe. It is, I won't lie, complicated, because it involves you preparing two other dishes first <laughs> <laughs> and using the leftovers from those to make this one. Um, because we made uh, pulled pork earlier in the week. Uh, it's like a Hawaiian-style pulled pork, um, and that was really good. And then we made a, a couple of chicken breasts that we then also pulled and used for like some chicken tacos and stuff. And then we took the leftovers from both of those and created this. And man, it was so good. Just oh, yeah. I, oh man, I, I want, we saved it because, you know, it, obviously we didn't, it, we made a whole giant stew pot of it. And it's not, you, you can't eat all that at once, especially with just two of us. So we had a bunch of it left over. So we put it in the refrigerator and we've been having it for lunch here this week. I think it'll be my lunch tomorrow and then probably the next day also. Um, and it's just good, man. It is, I, this thing is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm glad that you have experienced it. Yeah, I I, I have never ever heard of this thing before. You'd uh, never you would never find it out here. It's it's a local recipe, so you would either have to to order it from somewhere that like ships things, or uh, you'd have to do what you did and make it for yourself. Have you ever like experimented around with the ingredients in this thing? Because I was thinking like, what if we did kidney beans instead of lima beans? Is it gonna like alter the flavor a bunch? I don't think it'll alter it a whole lot. Um, it's a, it's I mean, a bigger you, you know, bean. you can, yeah, you always see different variants of it from like restaurant to restaurant in North Carolina. Uh, everybody has kind of their own way of of making it. Mm. Um, so yeah, you can play with it and swap different things out, see how it works for you. Okay, I is, is like the we had to like look around a bunch for lima beans in our market and. There was like 15 cans of kidney beans right there. And we were like, what if we just were like, no, 
<laughs> we need to try the recipe one time and then we substitute after that. Then then you riff on it. Yeah, yeah. So I, we may end up subbing some stuff there. And I think I liked the extra spice, but you know, I don't know if that's... It's certainly not everyone's cup of tea. We put quite a bit of cayenne pepper in there. Yeah. I mean, the recipe calls for a good amount anyway, but we put... We put more. Uh, so I, yeah, man, that was so good. Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, so that's what I've been up to. Have you been up to anything interesting? Uh, what did we get up to this Last weekend? week or so? Uh, so my wife, for her birthday, uh, this was this was fun and new to us, uh, from a good friend, received a cotton candy cake for her birthday whoa and it is it is six or seven layers of um stacked cotton candy in the shape of a big cake and each layer is a different color and a different flavor and uh she has been munching her way through that and has been loving it is this so that like, has been fun did someone figure out how to like take cotton candy and like compress it into hardened cake form they they didn't even really compress it it's just like round discs of cotton candy layered on top of each other oh man and then they write they write happy birthday on top of it so cute i wonder how you even make that it's like i i have seen cotton candy made in the big thing that spins it you know like at the Mm -hmm. fair but that doesn't seem like that would work for this yeah, I guess you would have to. I mean, that's that when you get it in the fair like that, it's loose enough that you could probably just. Uh, I guess if take you, that that bundle of it and sort of compress it into a shape. Yeah, I guess that's the idea, right? You like grab a whole, you know, handful of it or whatever, and then smash it down until you get a whatever circle you're looking for. Yeah, you have a like a a big ring mold ready to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, a mold. Yeah, so I was I was trying to think of the word mold and I could not think of it. I don't know why. That sounds super cool, man. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I hope your wife is enjoying it. it sounds yes, yeah, like she has been making her way through that. A sugar high for sure. Yep, and she's a she's a big cotton candy fan, so it was it was perfect. Oh man, I kind of want to try this, man. I should like go look up and see how much those are. That sounds kind of good. All right, fine. I guess we can talk about video games. Ah, I know. I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> People always come for the food, though. I know. I know. I don't have any more good food stories other than we ate that stew, and it's like all we've done. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, you know, what? I will. I will say to people, if anyone is, uh, I think that the day that this airs, if anyone out there is a Taco Bell fan, um, the thirteenth, which is thursday of this week i believe is the last day to get a bunch of items off the taco bell menu before they are retired Mm. i heard about this so yeah so they're removing a whole bunch of items for to i guess quote unquote streamline their menu they did this recently within the last year or two they removed several things items come and go from the taco bell menu not that i like go there that often but like yeah once in a while you go and you're like didn't this thing used to be on here and it's just like gone, right? Yep. It's like, what happened to Chalupas? They're just gone. Oh, now they're back. Like, yeah. What was that thing I always used to order? Oh, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So the thing that I used to get a long time ago when I was in college and going to Taco Bell much more frequently than I am now was there was a combo that was like the grilled burrito and the chips and cheese. And that was Mm -hmm. the, and then a drink. And that was the whole combo. And that combo is like completely gone. I don't think they even sell that burrito anymore. And now I believe the chips and cheese are being discontinued as part of this. Uh, I think so. Uh, the chips and dip are definitely going. Uh, I don't remember if that was the... that. I think that's the cheese. Yeah. It's not the salsa. So that's like, whoa, man. Uh, you know, it's like, whatever. I, I The thing I read online was a bunch of people like, oh, they're targeting the things that have potato in them. And like a yeah. lot of the things that had potato were being gotten rid of, which I never got any of. So I didn't really, no big deal to me, but also, you know, if you really like whatever the potato tacos and stuff that they made were, uh, it's probably yeah, the last a chance for a while. Complained about that in, in particular, because it was a good veggie option, right? 
Yeah. I guess if you're a vegetarian and you're going to Taco Bell, you've already made a mistake anyway. <laughs> but like, I, I feel for you. You know, if you some people are taking you there and you don't want to be a jerk about it and you just kind of want to, you know, just like go along with the flow and just order something, um, that kind of sucks. Because there definitely yeah. aren't many vegetarian options at Taco Bell. No. And like, even if there are, you get the dressing and the dressing is full of like lard somehow or something. And it's just like, <laughs> it's over immediately. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. I totally had forgotten about that, man. But an event we can all get behind, unlike this Taco Bell scourging is, uh, the game's done quick is coming back in a virtual yes. form. Finally. So they, they pushed out the regular summer dates um, they decided to cancel the their big event in Minnesota for obvious social distancing and safety reasons. Right. Uh, so they pushed it back to this coming weekend. I believe it starts August 16th. Yes, it runs August 16th through the 22nd. So that's like basically a whole week there. Yeah, it's like Sunday to end of Saturday night, basically. Yep. So there is quite a lot of stuff on the schedule. Uh, as it is virtual, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of like coordinating streams and making sure people are, you know, being properly shown and stuff. But also it probably means there's like a lot of interesting games that they couldn't usually do in a like live setting. Yep. And they are uh, they are bringing back from their last online fundraiser um pump it up mm -hmm. the showcase with uh happy feats who i believe was the same runner as last time um who is just doing another showcase uh which if you didn't watch it last time the showcase that he put on it is a show and it's definitely worth catching it's worth watching for sure i watched it last time and i'm gonna watch it again because this dude is unbelievable it, and for those of you who don't know, what's the name of the game? It's uh, Pump It Up. Is that the name? Pump It Up, yep. It's a DDR-like, you know, kind of like the Dance Dance Revolution games, but it is a yes. a different one. Yeah, uh, I think the arrows, are, the arrows are turned 45 degrees to what they are in DDR. Right. Copyright infringement free. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does not make the movements any less ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, and he plays on he plays on both boards at the same time. Yeah, it, it, the dude is jumping back and forth. you know, there's the set of four on on the left side and then a set of four on the right side. He has the arcade machine essentially set up in his garage or a room in his house or whatever. Uh, assuming he does the same thing as last time. Yeah. And he is like running around on that thing for like an hour straight. It is impressive. Yeah, and he has another hour planned for this time, so Oh, I'm super excited. It's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. But there's there's some other really good stuff on the uh, on the schedule. Um, there's another there's another co-op run of Ocarina of Time. Oh man, that was very silly last time. That should be good. Yeah. Uh, what else did I see on here? There was there was something in particular that I saw that I knew that you would uh, uh, I knew that you would appreciate. The Baba is you true ending. <laughs> is yes, here. that was the one. That was the one. <laughs> 27 minutes it's just gonna make me rage watching this guy play this i'm i'm curious what defines the true ending for that game i kind of don't want to watch because i feel like it's going to spoil a bunch of puzzles that my wife and i haven't done yet yeah yeah uh, that yeah that should be pretty good i see a uh, bunch there's of a, there's a hollow knight race yeah i was gonna say there's a bunch of cool metroidvanias i saw hollow knight on here i see um Bloodstained is on here in a few different formats. Yeah, the Zangetsu any percent. That should be cool because I played Zangetsu for like an hour and decided that I'm not good enough to play Zangetsu. <laughs> uh, the, there's a Doom Eternal speed run with no major glitches on Nightmare, which should be pretty impressive. Uh, that is like, if you want to see a dude who's just like really good at a shooting game, that should be a lot yeah. of that. Uh, there's also people playing some like uh, older Doom games. Doom 64 is on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued to know what Pringles the video game is. Is that a 
Oh God. <laughs> I it's, don't know. It's on the schedule. Okay. Yeah. I, you're right. I see. I it. mean, I, I will say that that is one of the things that games done quick is always, has always been great at is putting obscure games that you would never have heard of on the schedule and just like giving the, giving their community, however big or small it might be a platform to be like, Hey, this is a game that we love. I think it's cool this time too, because they're not in person. There's a lot of like, there's, there doesn't need to be a ton of downtime, right? Because they can switch hosts, they can switch commentators, and they can yep. switch runners, and they just like switch to a different stream. That person is already all set up and ready to go, and he and his team jump on the mic and they start talking. And you don't yeah. need to wait an hour for them to like tear down the Super NES and put up the GameCube or whatever. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if they get in, if there are more games that they manage to squeeze in because of that. Yeah, I... I'm super curious. There's, there's so much weird stuff on here, man. It's just like games you have never heard of. Uh, there's a 48 track relay for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That'll be great. That should be <laughs> insane. <laughs> uh, Jet Set Radio. Yeah, like I said, those bloodstained ones. Donkey Kong Countries. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff on here. People will, uh, people should and will, I assume, check this out. But I'm glad we got to we. We finally paid attention and are announcing it before it happens so people can watch the whole thing. Yeah, rather than in the midst of it. <laughs> yeah, and it will still be ongoing uh, when we record the next week. So we, hopefully uh, we'll get more. Uh, we'll have more information about how it's been going because we'll, it's been, it'll have been on for at least a day by the time we start next time. So, yep. yeah. Oh, man, I hadn't looked through this that carefully bef until now. And there, man, I like I kind of want to see a lot of this. <laughs> I feel like I kind of been like waning on it in the last few years, you know. So like, ah, eh, like I'll tune in when I have time or whatever. But I'm at home now; I can just leave it on all time, whatever. Yeah. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah, I like that. Friday night ends with a projected seven-hour and twenty-minute run of Final Fantasy VII remake. <laughs> yes, dude, please. Ah. Uh. I want that game to come out for PC. Square Enix, what are you doing? Come on, help me. 2021. I want to play your game. Let me play your game. Well, yeah, although you you got to hope that when they do port it to PC, they don't have some of the same problems that apparently Horizon Zero Dawn has been having. Yes. Another game that has just recently come out on the PC, uh, a, a former PlayStation exclusive like the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, Horizon yep. Zero Dawn. Michael, did you uh, did you get in on this? Yeah, I did. So I actually, I I have a friend who is such a huge fan of uh, of this game that they wound up giving it to me as a gift so that I could play it day one. Oh wow, dude! What a great friend. Um, yeah. Uh, so I I fired it up over the weekend. Um, and interestingly, I don't I don't remember another game doing this. But it runs through its own um, graphics optimization as part of the setup when you first launch it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Like, so, like it does, like, does it say what it's doing? Yeah, it says optimizing graphics. Interesting. I, I, uh, and then it, I'm it so curious has, what that's doing under the hood. It has like a progress bar going across the screen, which... When you first see it and you see that the progress bar goes to two decimal places, your first thought is, oh, this is going to take a while. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and and it did. It, it took it a good half hour to, to run through the, the full optimization. A half hour? Yeah. And this is like you turn the game on. And nothing. After, this, is, this is after the like 75 gig download. Of course, right. You got to download like 800 gigs or whatever games are these days. Like, right. And then, and then it you turn it on for the first time. It installs some garbage at the beginning like every game does. Sure, sure. And then it sits there with a progress bar for like a half an hour. Yep. Just kidding. You're not there yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> I cannot imagine how mad I would be if I bought this and it was like, haha, by the way, it doesn't do it every time, right? No, it, it's just the first time. Oh, okay, thank God, Jesus. That's like a throwback to like super old games where they just took forever to install because your hard drive was like 2,000 RPM spinning plates. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Man. And I I appreciate the fact that they they're trying to automate the process, but at the same time, you know, I can I can set up my own settings. Yeah, it must be doing something though. Like it, I really wish I knew more about game graphics like programming because you don't just like force someone to sit through like even a 15 minute thing at the start of your game unless you have like a really good reason for it. Yeah. That's so curious, man. I, like, are they just like pre-computing like a lot of the lighting and stuff so that you get like, you don't have to do it on the fly, some kind of optimization thing? Or th- I don't know. I, I don't, yeah, I have. I wish I could speak to it more, but I don't know. Yeah, man. But so, so you actually play it though? Like after yeah. you spent an hour yeah, waiting? Yeah. So I did. I did fire it up, and I I wound up playing for maybe an hour or so. I I played through the the introduction. Okay, and it looked all right. Played all right. Yeah, uh, the play, the actual play was fine. I did have some of the same stuttering issues with some of the cutscenes that people were reporting. Um, mine wasn't drastic. Um, it was, you know, it was here and there throughout the the cutscenes. Um, but I did, I did have some of the the frame rate issues. Hmm, so it, the cutscene would be playing, and then it would like freeze for a second, and and I don't pick know if mine or... ever totally froze, but it would definitely stutter just a little bit. Okay, like hitch up and very clearly not run at the full speed that it was going a second ago. Yeah, or whatever. exactly. And it, it would ne- it never lasted for very long, but it it would sort of come and go. Interesting. Uh, I'm so the, curious. The cause... actual gameplay itself was seemed to be fine. I didn't have any issues with that. Okay, and and this is like kind of one of those like you're running around picking up loot and shooting the bad guys in the open world. Yeah, kind it's kind of like it's it's kind of like the new Tomb Raider games, just in a different setting. Okay, so like you got right, your so rather than being set in the present in uh, like an Amazon jungle, you are in a dystopian future. Okay, so you like you got your weapons and you can choose a whole bunch of different ones and run around yeah. and harvest yeah, your... You got your your skill tree and you earn experience and skill points and you you know you build out your tech tree and you gather craftables and okay i think so man, i i don't know what it is about this game though that the aesthetic is just so interesting the like mechanical robot dinosaurs as like analogies for rampant crazy ai <laughs> it's like such yeah a and it, it's cool it's funny because it gets you it gets you with it right off the bat where it you know the the opening cinematic just like shows the forest and it's talking about the you know living in harmony with the elements of nature water earth the wind and steel and then one of the giant like mechanized animals comes walking through the frame man yeah, man, it's so cool. I it just has such a cool idea for a thing, and you play as this uh, this female character, and then you're just like out there sniping dinosaurs and hunting and all kinds of stuff. Oh, it looks so cool. Yep. I really- yeah. So I I played through the the intro. The story actually starts with her as a little kid, like six, and you play through the uh, the first part of the game as her as a six year old. Oh, interesting. So there's yeah. like a. Back, so you're getting some backstory stuff. Yep. Cool, cool. Well, I'll be interested to hear if, as you keep going through that, how it goes. Because the, it's like, I, what kind of story are you? like? It's you don't just like run around and shoot dinosaurs with a bow and arrow, right? <laughs> there's clearly more going on here. Yeah, there's, it's not. It's not. It's more than like Monster Hunter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. Because that's like a, I, Monster Hunter is a fine game, and I'm sure people that like it enjoy it very much. But I. I don't know if I could like play a game like that for 30 hours or however long a game like this is. Right. Very cool. So man. yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to, you know, because being in the middle of three games already was not enough, but yeah, I got I'm definitely excited to, uh, to really dive into this one. Cause I've been waiting for it basically since it, it got announced for, for the PlayStation. Yeah, I am. Man, I hope they iron out the issues. That sounds so cool, though. It's like I, I, I really do want to play this. This seems like one where as soon as Steam puts it on sale for like even a modest amount, I'm gonna be like, ah, all right, fine. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I read somewhere that um, Guerrilla Games, who is the developer for this, 
uh, released a statement saying uh, we're aware of this, we're looking into it, you know, it's top priority to get this running the way it should be for everybody. So, okay, well, that's good news then. They're that's yeah, they've they've been taking feedback and they're they're trying to address it. Solid. So you said you're playing two other games. I know one of them must be Final Fantasy XII, as you and I are both in the midst of that one. Yes, yes, we are. All right. And I think maybe we'll hold our discussion on that till Andy comes back, hopefully next week, or if not, the week after. Yeah. I I have a lot of things I can say about it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a game with a lot of choices that it makes, for sure. Yes. And I think... It'll do Andy it'll do Andy good to be here and have played more of it hopefully and before we get into like a lot of the weird system stuff because I I feel like I screwed up on a couple of my characters man I want to I want to go back and reallocate <laughs> I think their jobs so, are bad So I I did just get to the point of opening up the second job for everybody Yeah I I did it yeah I I've done that I've taken their second license boards already. Mm-hmm. I've started filling them out and I'm realizing some of these second job, well, the second job, the jobs I didn't choose before are kind of garbage. <laughs> At least a couple <laughs> of them. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe so they have can, cooler stuff. You can go and, and re re spec them where, wait, really? Where, how do yeah, I do you that? You can, if you talk to uh, Mont Blanc in the guild hall, Uh, the Clan Centurio Hall in Rabinaster. Okay, I've talked to him multiple times. One of the dialogue options in talking to him, the you can ask him, do you have any more hunts? But you can also say, I want to respect my license board. Oh, okay. I need to double check that then. I don't think I've... I don't remember seeing that. I'm going to... Making a note here to go try this. Yeah, you should have that as an option because I've definitely seen it. And are you playing on the same platform as me? You're playing on the PC? Yes, Steam version. Okay. All right, so if you've seen it, then it's probably there. All right, that's cool, because I feel like at least two of my characters are kind of bad because of the choices I made. <laughs> yeah. Which is unfortunate. So, um, and what's the third one that you're into? Are you still playing the Xenoblade? Uh, so I've... I've... Still been pl- sort of chugging along a little bit at Baba Is You. Okay, yeah. I have Baba Is You open as well. My wife and I are playing together and it is still infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get any less so. I have made uh I keep making like very slow progress in Xenoblade, but I'm not like I'm not out there trying to like grind ahead to like a quick finish or anything, just because that game is so easy to just play and not pay attention to just like mm-hmm. mindlessly grind a bunch of quests where you have to kill 15 of these and five of those or whatever. I'm all yep. the way up to the, I got to the Aerith sea. Okay. So I, I'm in that area and doing the quests uh, for them, the people that are there. I don't want to spoil what that is for people who haven't even played it. Um, but that is a, that is a cool game and man, I like, uh, playing it on the switch it's nice just like relaxing turn off my brain kind of let's do some mindless grinding game yeah, but that one's that one's a good one to take your time with yeah I, I will continue playing that game and i'm sure i will one day beat it and then play the the um what is it the future connected the thing that comes after it the like new piece of yes, content the extra content that they added on the end yeah i will one day play that um, but that day might be 2021. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that isn't the only thing I've been like very slowly making my way through. I've also been trying the CNC remastered collection. Oh yeah, we talked about that several episodes back. Yeah, the Command and Conquer remastered collection, which is a combination of the two oldest Command and Conquer games on PC. So that is Command and Conquer, the original, and Command and Conquer Red Alert. Yes. And so Red Red Alert, I did play a little bit of back in the day. I don't know that I ever played the original, though. So that Red Alert was definitely the one I played more of as a kid as well. 
and you know red alert has the like fictional allies versus soviets kind of uh you know fake cold war what happens if einstein goes back in time and kills hitler <laughs> Like, that's literally you know, the, totally totally plausible plot that's literally the plot of that game it's like the opening cutscene is einstein going back in time and killing hitler <laughs> and then like coming back to the present and being like hitler is out of the way <laughs> and you're like how do you know who he is like he just came back in time and he's dead well yeah i was gonna say he co- he comes back to the future and everyone's like who yeah it's yeah it, but it's so dumb the, uh, Anyway, and so that game is uh, the Soviets versus the Allies, and the cutscene. So I was I stated before that they had found cutscene footage and remastered the cutscenes. Right. Yeah. That is wrong. They did not do that <laughs> because. Oh really? Did they reshoot new cutscenes? No, not even. They did AI upscaling on the old ones. Oh, okay. So they uh, they found so some things that they did find are they found tapes of the B roll and the shots like in a lot of cases of like the green screens and whatever of mm-hmm. of the actors and stuff like between takes and whatever, but they didn't find higher quality versions of the videos themselves. Oh, okay. So in a lot of cases, the videos still look kind of bad. <laughs> Yeah, I did notice that. I I looked through some of the the videos on the Steam store when they first announced this, and I it did sort of look like B you know B movie film reel. And to be fair, they were B movie film reel like shooting budgets, so it's not sure. That, yeah, you know, but it does not look like someone with a modern camera. Like you can mm-hmm. very easily tell. Um, but it looks quite a bit better than what the original was, and you can um. You can force it to play the originals if you want. There's an option menu option, uh, and you can go watch the original versions, um, and they okay. are bad. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a blurry mess on a modern monitor. It's just you can't even see anything that's going on. Um, the cool feature, though, once you get into the game, you can hit the space bar, and in game as it's playing, it will toggle between the new graphics and the old graphics. Oh wow! Okay. So if you want to see that pixel mess of like your little mini gunner dude that took up seven pixels or whatever, um, you can. So they, uh, and so then consequently, right, all the new graphics like are generally of the same size and stuff as the old ones were in order to allow them to switch back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. But they are obviously way higher resolution. (laughs) And so you can see like tons more detail and stuff in the graphics there. Um, and my understanding is they did re-record most of the audio using the original people that had recorded it. So they found the people that recorded the voice of like the computer saying like new construction options or whatever. And they got that lady to re-record that line again. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. And then they pitched it up to make it sound like her from 20 years ago or whatever. Right. Uh, it's, it is a impressive thing. And the, the, um, those games, I don't remember if you remember this, but they had like a really lengthy installer. You would start it up and there'd be like this cool video and it would come up and show you like, you know, d- assembling this warhead and like adjusting the sound options and it would play a cool sound as they like strike the stamp into the missile and like it yeah, slides yeah. down the con- conveyor belt, you know, and all this stuff. So they preserved that whole installer thing as a like gag or whatever as it inst- plays at the start of the campaign is like when you start it up for the first time right that a, a screen pops up and lets you pick if you want to play command and conquer or red alert and you pick one or the other and both of them have these and the first time you boot it it shows this video because it is just a video right it's not like it's interactive right. and it it plays the same thing where it's like going on selecting like it's like choose irq port outdated <laughs> choose <laughs> settings outdated <laughs> choose whatever outdated yes. hd graphics enabled and then it like you know up the video and makes it look all pretty um super super funny um and, they, and so then you play the game and uh the games are like it, it uh old man <laughs> i don't know how to describe it like these are these are strategy like um, real time strategy games, right? So you're like building a base and building your troops up and stuff. These came out before 
a lot of the like standards and conventions of the genre that existed, right? So like, there's yeah. no there's no like you can't highlight all and attack move. There's no attack move. That's not a thing. <laughs> like the units barely have AI at all. Like if you get attacked by a unit, that unit will fire back, but the other units around it are just going to stand there. <laughs> Right, because you didn't tell them. You didn't tell them to do anything, right? The one guy getting shot at cares, but everyone else is like, yo, I don't know, whatever. Um, And and of course, like the balance in that game is hilarious. Like there are just some units that are just so crazy powerful. The Tanya and the Commando can just like run around and murder 500 soldiers or whatever. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your engineers can just blow up and capture structures with impunity, basically, because the AI is real dumb. Um, And I believe they... I read an interview of the with the development team that they preserved bugs in the AI's behavior because they built some of the campaign missions around the bugs because of how broken it was on the hard difficulties. Oh wow! So like, they're like, yeah. So there's the, um, there's this. Uh, I mean, it's famous to me. I guess I don't know if it's famous to other people, but in the original Command and Conquer game, if you build a sandbag, you know, like a little like sandbag wall. Mm-hmm. The AI doesn't know what to do with that. It so it just considers it impassable terrain. Okay. And so you just build a wall of sandbags around the map, and the AI is boxed in, and it can't do anything. <laughs> it just sits there. That's fantastic. And, you know, so then that gives you free reign to go wherever and mine a million resources and build 800 tanks and come, you know, come crush them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is... And, the developers admit to say, like, yeah, this is what we did to beat some of the campaign missions on the harder difficulty. <laughs> it's like, you guys are admitting this. Is, you, you didn't just get good at the game. This is how you won. <laughs> um, so I thought that was very funny of them to, like, just outright admit that, yeah, sorry, these games were too hard. So we <laughs> we planned on these bucks. Nice. Uh, very fun. But it has been cool to, like, go back and play through all these and watch the, like, bad CGI and then go back and watch the like green screen outtakes of the guy like flubbing the line because he doesn't know what the word like the brotherhood of nod is or he doesn't understand like what is a tesla coil or whatever <laughs> <laughs> uh you know watch the guy who plays uh kane like eating a slice of pizza on an off take or whatever <laughs> it's very <laughs> funny <laughs> Um, so it has been cool and they have a bunch of fun stuff like that every time you beat a mission uh as either the the allies of the Soviets and then the reverse on the other game as a uh, nod or GDI that you unlock little things in a gallery. And there is like, you know, bonus footage and pictures of people and them filming and pictures of like the development team and their offices. And it's like fun little like memorabilia uh, from, you know, the making of this game and stuff. I assume that they found on these old tapes because like, why would they have a picture of like, the guy playing Kane eating a slice of pizza in here. <laughs> it's a very strange, right? Yeah. Weird thing to have kept. Yeah, exactly. So it, it was cool. Um, and I, I'm enjoying it as a, just like fun. And because the missions aren't that long and it is separated by mission. So you like, once you beat the mission, you can just quit out and it'll just save your spot and you can come back. Oh, okay. That's so, handy. Yeah. So it is nice to just like go in, play one map, be like, all right, this was fun. Uh, I had to spend like 20 minutes building sandbags in a line all the way up to their base to enclose them or whatever. Like, I don't want to, don't want to repeat this. So, uh, that was a, that was a pretty fun time. Uh, I, I, I will continue poking away at that as well. I think. Nice. Yeah. That's good for when you just have a few minutes and you want to fill in a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, most of the missions aren't long. And and I assume you could turn the difficulty down from normal to even there's a lower difficulty where I assume your units would be like way, way more powerful. Yeah, basically story mode. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it's not like the, the achievements are like completing all the missions. None of them are like complete the missions on hardest. Although I think there are ones for completing the missions on hardest, but I'm not going to do that because I am too lazy. Yep. Um, but I'm not too lazy to talk about Blazeball, Michael. Yeah, you've got a season in the books now. Yeah, I, I was present for a full season. I watched as the Hades Tigers never look back, y'all, uh, came and went and went all the way through the, the playoffs and won the season three of Blazeball. Blazeball World Series champs. That's right. 
Uh, rest in peace to uh, Violence Landry, who was incinerated during that game two. Very rough on him. Uh, player literally was just just completely incinerated during the game. Thanks, umpires. Blaze, blaze of glory, quite literally. Yes. Um, you know, people ask what blaze ball is. Uh, you know, that's what I can tell you. The players can get incinerated because an umpire feels like it. Um, that's just how the game goes. Uh, what a season, man. And uh, I find that now they the creators of Blaze Ball have decided to take a week or two break. So they are not... Normally, the, the one season ends on a week end, and it picks up the next Monday as the next season. I guess they decided that uh, Blaze Ball has gotten too popular. <laughs> And their servers have been on fire for too long, so they're uh, they put up a nice uh, a nice little message saying, "Hey, we love you guys, and thank you to the commissioner who is always doing a good job. Always, always the commissioner is doing a good job." Which is how you know it's fake baseball. Exactly. <laughs> uh, also, you would say he's doing a good job even if he's not. So in that way, it is like real baseball. Uh, and. Uh, so they said they're going to take a couple weeks off and work on their code and, and trying to get the servers under control and, and bring it back better than ever, uh, in a week or two. So probably a couple weeks off, I'm guessing. Um, but I, when they come back, I will have a lot of coins because I am told one of the elections that passed was eat the rich and the top 1% of coin earners will have their monies redistributed to the other 99%. <laughs> Uh, which I think is pretty fun. I think they already said you're going to get like 190 coins or something. It's not actually that much. Right. But, you so know. You started, you started, I'm curious, how, what was your delta on coins over the season? Where did oh, you start and where did you finish? Sure, sure. So I started, I think when you start the game, like when you play for the first time, they give you 200 for free. Okay. Uh, and I didn't do a ton of betting, mostly because I'm lazy. The games kick off every hour. That's a lot. And it's a lot, yeah. And you can bet on any game, right? And there's limits to how much you can bet, and you can up them using coins and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I'm mostly too lazy to check in on it that much. So I check in on it like every day or you know every like couple times a day if I'm bored. Sure. Um, so I spent a lot of my coins on the like um, the thing that when you're when you the team that you're rooting for wins, and I'm the I'm a fan of the Hades Tigers. Uh, when they win, you earn gold based on how many times they win. Okay. So, so basically, I'm just like constantly upping that thing. And I think I earn something like 40 gold or something now per win. And so I think I had, uh, I definitely ended with almost zero gold because I spent all of it buying votes uh, at the end of the season. But yeah, it, it was a good number. I think at some point I had like over 500. So. Okay. So yeah, I'm doing well. Yeah, and, you know, the, the next season will start up in a couple of weeks or whenever, and I'm sure after, you know, a day, basically, if the team does, you know, 50-50 or whatever, I'll probably end up with a couple hundred gold again. So, it's it's pretty fun. Uh, it is a silly way to watch some fake internet baseball uh, and not have to watch the train wreck that is real baseball. <laughs> uh, speaking of train wrecks, Michael, I think we have to address... The train wreck that is real sports. Uh, I you know. assume that you can only be referring to college football. Yeah. What are they doing? Uh, well, I think the problem is that they've basically let everybody do whatever they want. There is no, unlike professional sports, there is no single approach to this is what we're doing. Now... Maybe I am a fool and don't understand the the many vagaries and important differences in college sports, but isn't there a single body that is in charge of almost all college athletics? There is the NCAA. And it seems um, like they would be able to say, here is what all of you are doing. You would think so, but instead what they did was they left it up to each conference to decide what they were going to be doing. And I, in part... I can understand that because every every school is subject to the dictates of the state that they are in. And because every state is in a slightly different place, 
I think it would have been too much for the NCAA to juggle and try and say everybody is following this one blanket rule. But never because mind. That, you know, if that were the if that were the case, then they would have just shut sports down and there wouldn't be anything this fall. Well, it turns out very many of the college football leagues are doing that. <laughs> yep. So I think it was yesterday that the uh, the MAC, the Mid Atlantic Conference, is that what that is, um, was the first conference to say we are not going to be playing football in the fall we will try and push it to the spring and they were the team that wound up opening the floodgates because now one team has done it and no no conference is going no one conference has done it and no conference is necessarily going to want to be the last conference holding out so the last thing i saw as of the recording of this which is on uh, the the 10th was that the SEC still wanted to play, of course. And then, like, a couple schools here and there in some of the other conferences, like Nebraska and a few of these other, like, big schools in various places wanted to play. LSU, I think. Yep. And it's like... Yeah, so... But the rest uh, of their conferences are like, nope. <laughs> and even the, the conferences that some of those teams are in are like, no. <laughs> yeah, so the... um. Yeah, Pac, uh, Pac-12, Pac-12 said they're done, right? And the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, I believe, are expected to announce tomorrow that there won't be a fall season. Yeah. Uh, they're, the school the school presidents are all meeting for each of those conferences tomorrow, and that's the expectation. Um, the ACC, apparently, um, by contrast, came out today after league meetings and said that they absolutely plan to go full steam ahead and try and play this fall. Oh my gosh. So I, I think at this point, you you just have to assume that there's not going to be a bowl season, regardless of what happens. Yeah, because like unless there's a drastic shift in the next two weeks and everybody does push it to the to the spring, then you're just going to have a bunch of conferences that play only teams in their conference. And then there will be a conference title game and that will be it. That will be the bowl game for the season. Yeah. Cause I can't imagine many of the conferences are going to be interested in playing interconference games where like you travel from your conference to the next one across the country or wherever. Yep. When already we know that that's a pro- been a giant problem for major league baseball and other sports that have tried to do that. So yeah, not a great look uh, for them, I think, especially given that, you know, and I guess Pac-12 hasn't said, but a lot of them are like no football in the fall, leaving open the chance that they then decide to redo it in the summer or you know, in the spring or something when in theory cases are less bad or maybe a vaccine exists. But then if you do that, what happens the year after that? Do you go back to playing in the fall after giving people only yeah. like a month off? That isn't going to fly. Yeah, and even that becomes even harder when half, you know, half of D1 has played in the fall and the other half has played in the spring. Right. And so then people are going to argue that's not fair for one or the other one or whatever. I just I I don't see a way where now that this hodgepodge happens, like maybe some schools play and some don't, but it it just seems to me like it it's got to be just essentially canceled at this point, right? Yeah. It's it's going to be whatever happens is going to be a mess to unravel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be bad. I I don't know, man. I, it just seems like so ill-advised. Yeah, but if the, you know, if the NFL goes ahead, we, we could we could potentially be looking at like seven months of football in the next year. So. Uh, well, let's talk about the NFL a little bit then, too. Uh, as you know, uh, on this podcast in the past, we have all been uh, fantasy football players. So I'm going to come at this from a fantasy perspective because, I mean, I think from the player safety perspective, the only option is to just cancel the season. <laughs> I don't see any other safe yeah. option. Um, they, they have not said they're doing that. I still have my doubts, and it may happen despite what they say, but we'll find out, I guess. Uh, so the NFL is saying, you know, hey, the first game is going to be in September. We're going to play. Football is happening, guys. It's, it's going on. We're going to football. Football 
football. Uh, you know, there's going to be some kind of testing. Players can be designated for COVID uh, as a COVID designation, and then they're out for two weeks or whatever. Here is, you know, so from the fantasy perspective, right, again, talking about playing fantasy football, mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of my coworkers were talking about this this week, so it was on the top of my mind. I don't know how you approach this season. I think there's no way to play fantasy football as it was last year with what will happen this year because you know what is going to happen. They're going to get a COVID test back two hours before a game on Sunday morning. Yep. Random guy, the running back, the star quarterback, whatever, is going to randomly get pulled Sunday morning with a positive COVID test mm. and be off Sorry the Sorry you're not playing. Yeah. On just like at the drop of a hat or it's going to be, you know, worse. We're like, oh, sorry, this team had five positive COVID tests, the entire offensive line. <laughs> like, yep. And that just turns the game on its head so completely like you can't trust any player, right? Normally, you can't trust a player anyway, because injuries are so rampant in the NFL. But like yeah. when you have guys who could literally just go from being full speed one day Oops, they got a positive COVID test on, you know, Friday afternoon. Sorry, you now have your starting guy is just out. And then they may not be out for that long, right? It doesn't take that long necessarily, depending on, you know, the kind of care and whatever they receive, which I'm sure mm -hmm. the NFL will give them quality care. Uh, you know, maybe two to three weeks, maybe a month, and then they're back, potentially. Yeah, you you would think a month at the outside. Yeah, so, like, even if you give them, like, the IR designation, right, that's, you can't just drop a guy who's only going to be out for a month. <laughs> yeah, especially, you know, especially if he was a high draft pick. Of course. And so, like, what does draft picks even mean in this? Where, like, you know, a guy who could, at the drop of a hat, be out for six weeks, you know, various times because he got COVID or didn't or whatever. You know, I mean, the you play that risk all the time in the NFL, but like, do you have to start accounting for like, Oh, I need to look at the like case rates in this guy's city to mm -hmm. see if it's worse there than other places or something. And, you know, I think they have, they said that there aren't going to be fans. I think they, they have said at least most of the games are not going to have fans. Yeah. To start I think with. So. And just, man, I don't know. I don't, I don't see how you can even like, I don't understand why my coworkers want to play this season. It just seems like it's not going to count. Like they're going to get seven games in and then like, oops, two whole teams have to just be canceled for a week because every person on the team has COVID or like, Oh, sorry. Like the case rates are too high. The governor of the state just shut it down and they won't allow any games to be played. Yep. So I don't know, man. I just, mm. It's it's going to be a mess no matter what they do. Yeah. I I think as a manager of a fantasy league, I, I people that want to play um, despite all this, I'm just going to say like, hey, we're going to treat this year as a throwaway. Like, you know, we're going to be playing mostly for fun. The stakes are going to be a lot lower. Like I, if they cancel the season halfway through, I'm just going to refund everyone's money. Like, I don't know how you can attempt to be serious about this when it's just going to be like the chance like think of how ruined you would be if they just find like oh by the way that like the number one team in the league half their players have covid on sunday morning they're all out it's just like a bunch of random backups that are playing this week yeah <sighs> or even even worse even worse you have your starting quarterback or starting wide wide receiver is playing in the five o'clock game yeah and all or the monday game even worse and you know there's nowhere you have no other players you can pick up mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you know half the offense is a game time scratch yeah i i just think that i think we're going to have to increase roster size a bunch i think that's going to be the only way to allow people to even play like reasonably yeah. Because unlike baseball, you can't just pull guys up from the minors. Right. And, it, you know, even if they bring backups or second string, third string guys or whatever out 
like no one is going to own those guys if they, you know, get COVID on Sunday at 9.55 or whatever. And, you know, you won't have anyone to substitute if you just let the, you know, let the wolves go. It's like everyone <laughs> refreshing the news as fast as possible to find out which famous player got COVID today and they have to go grab their backup. You know, like the guy who owns that guy is getting hosed. And so you then have to hope, like, you know, do you have a, a second tight end or like, you know, a third <laughs> quarterback or whatever? Uh, yeah, I think it's just I I really don't understand why they want to play. It doesn't seem like it's going to be fun, you know? Yeah. But we'll find out, I guess. I don't know. I'm I'm just in a place about all this, man. I don't I don't understand why football is being played football in specific. Right. At least again i guess i'm already been proven wrong about this baseball it feels like the players already stand super far apart anyway like no one is on top of each other in baseball football it's the exact opposite right yep yeah you're crowded together and you know 22 guys in a phone box sometimes right it's like how many guys are jumping on top of each other to get that one loose ball or whatever <sighs> it's all know. about the money yeah man i Sorry to be a bring a bummer on this at the end here. I just I I really don't know why. It, it just I you know it, it is more stressful than as the commissioner right because you have to like wonder okay what do we as a league do in a case where someone's team just gets completely screwed? Yeah, like what happens if someone wakes up in the morning and their entire team is out? Like, do we just yeah. allow them emergency pickups or something? Yeah. To, like, make the game even played, you know? Like, or are they just like, sorry, you lose? Like, I, I don't know. It's a... It's tough, man. Uh. Well, yeah. I, I guess if, uh, if you out there have solutions on how JJ should manage his fantasy league... Please email me. I'm very torn about this. I kind of just want to tell everyone, screw it, you guys do it yourselves. But like, also, that feels very rude to say to people. So yeah. where can they send that email, Michael? They can send that to us at podcast at weweregamers.com. We always love to hear from people. Uh, we will try and respond to your email. I think we, we usually wait until we have a critical mass of email and then do a, a whole bunch of responses all at once. Yeah, definitely. So we, we will check those. Um, and we may, you know, like if it's Michael and me again next week, we may not uh, want to dip into them too much unless there's a whole bunch. We never know. Um, yeah. And uh, you can check us out on, we are on all the cool podcasting platforms. Uh, we're on Spotify these days. We're on Apple and Google Podcasts. Uh, Stitcher. I'm trying to think where else. Uh, oh, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Hey, go to that YouTube Hit subscribe, take those notifications, please. I was told by someone today, I didn't know you guys had a YouTube, and I was like, gosh darn it, <laughs> why? Are we not we saying... Push it. We only push it every week. Are we not saying that we have a YouTube? We have a YouTube. Go watch it. Um, yeah, I think a new episode of Carbon Scoring went up today. Yes, I have not heard it yet. I am interested. The, the Carbon Scoring is done. Or the newest one is up there. I know uh, Andy and I recorded another uh, subspace transmission as well about the late, more Discovery episodes. And I am curious, Michael, are you interested in the Lower Decks? Uh, I have heard a lot about it. Um, so I am I am very curious to, to hear more uh, and maybe, maybe give it a shot. So we don't talk about it on the upcoming episode, but it, uh, it should be happening... Uh, I have seen the first one anyway, and it's coming out weekly now, I think. Okay. It is the animated Star Trek show uh, that's out there. It's about, like, lower-ranked crew members, I guess. It's, like, not the person in charge is not a captain. They're, like, you know, some ensign or whatever. Right. It's the, the people you see getting sucked out the side of the ship when a hole gets blown in in the main movies. Yeah, the little red shirt guys. Um, so I am curious. I, I watched the first episode and it was okay, but also it's a first episode, so you never know because like I like it spends most of its time introducing the people, right? Right. So I I don't hate it. I want to give it some more time. It is an animated show, so it's very in that like 
I don't know what the like genre is, but like kind of a, I don't want to use the word twee. It's the wrong word, but like, a, you know, there are certain characters that are like very, you know, like forward and stuff. You know, again, I, I only have like a one, one picture of each character. I don't know what everyone's thing is yet. Okay. So I'm curious to watch it some more. I didn't hate the first episode. I was not enthused by the like animation style, but I will, I've, made my piece with it and i think it looks all right so okay yeah if you're interested check that out i'm sure andy and i will talk about it during subspace transmissions at some point and maybe even on this pod if michael decides to watch too so who knows yeah so stay tuned yeah stay tuned thank you everyone for joining us this week uh hopefully andy will be back next week again uh and if not you know i apologize in advance so you'll get more of us the best the best